from the Fathead Studio in Speedway, Indiana, this is The Skinny. Maybe I need to start in the trash truck business. <laughs> Don't rule it out. So my, my body holds about 11 units of blood, the average human body, guy my size, and I had 22 units put in because I, I had two full oil changes. He's airborne, and then I'm above him. Uh, all at the same time. Yeah, you're just like, wow, that's a wild picture. <laughs> boom, and yeah. then it goes boom, and it goes back out. I hang up on the guy. I go, who's this? This is Deion Sanders. I go, yeah, nice try. See you later. Bounce, and then this insane roll. That thing sent it. No, no, no. It's okay, you know, we come back. They just do it. Like, Man, am I still pretty? And he's like, you ain't pretty, but you're going to be all right. If I was a few years older, you might be calling me grandpappy. That's like, all right. Hi, I'm Tony Stewart. I'm Scott Dixon. I'm Mario Andretti. I'm Christy Wheat. I'm Travis Pastrana. Hey, I'm Antron Brown. Hello, I'm Angel Sanfe, and this is The Skinny. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Skinny. We have a great show coming your way. We're in Indianapolis, Indiana. You're looking at the beautiful Fatheads Eyewear Studios. And as you can see, we have Miss Angel Sampe, a three-time NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Champ, in the studio with us. I'm Ken Stout. The big man is Rico Elmore. Back behind the controls, that is Michael Young. I'm here. Some know him as the track dude. And sitting right alongside another three-time champ, courtesy of the NHRA Top Fuel category, Mr. Andron Brown. Thought he was going to get in here and get away. That ain't going to happen, man. <laughs> There's just no <laughs> – There's a lot of cameras in here, man. We're going to get you sooner or later. Oh, but, I see uh... why he's got it cranked up over there. Right <laughs> yeah. now. That's good. Six NHRA championships inside of the studio. It's pretty cool. Those do not come easily. And uh, two of the best players to, to get it done here. Of course, uh, Angel has been doing it for a long time, making her debut. I believe it was 1996, if I'm not mistaken. So you've uh, you made a few laps, girl, and uh, you're pretty good at what you do. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it, seems, we had... it seems weird to hear the Pro Stock Motorcycle title now. Yeah? It, it hasn't been long. Already? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been long, but I, I'm so it, you know, just all in on the dragster now that I'm starting to forget that I ever did the bike thing. It's really, it's really weird. So we have to touch on her now, obviously, <laughs> that she brought it up. Uh, and the reason uh, AB is in the studio with us as well, you've joined forces with Antron Brown. You went from Pro Stock Motorcycle 2022, made your debut in the alcohol top alcohol dragster category, fuel-injected car, though, correct? That's right. Um, and then, if I'm not mistaken, your first outing in the divisional, you went to the final round. Is that correct? We, uh, I think we lost a third round um i won first and second and lost in the third yeah that's correct i beat tony stewart in the second round so that was you know right off the bat i had that that to put on Swing my resume ahead, took care of that. <laughs> and mike yeah. coughlin in the first round i did number yeah. one qualifier because we were 16 we, we barely got in the show but um i was just so happy to be there when i knew that we were going to run on race day i was i couldn't be more excited that we, i was getting to drive the car again Thought it would probably be my last run for the day, and we won, you know, against uh, Mike, who was number one qualifier. I was like, oh, well, we got Tony next round, but at least I get to drive the car again. And uh, and then we beat Tony, so it was a great day. Unfortunately, went out the third round, but it, it was it was a lot more than I expected. You were out. You were out this weekend. How was it? Oh gosh, we uh yeah we did the Cletus and Cars Regional this weekend. I'm with the Mahalik Brothers Racing Team, and we debuted our Hankstafers Dragster. So Hankstafers is now on board for the rest of the year. And I think we gave them a good outing for qualifying. We had three pretty good runs. I, I think I was in sixth place going into race day or fifth. I can't remember. Was it fifth? Yeah, fifth. Um, and then I made a huge mistake in the first round. So I uh, got a bit of experience that, unfortunately, you can't learn until it happens. Um, the car instantly smoked the tires off the starting line. I let it get a little sideways. And then I, once it calmed or once it straightened up, I tried to pedal it. And that was the absolute wrong decision. And it made two big bangs and threw the gasket out of the side. And I, I was heartbroken. I, I, was, I, I was there. Yeah. And I watched it happen. And I knew exactly what, what you were just talking about. I was trying it, to win. It, oh, I... <laughs> Man, I totally get it. And uh, listen, it's when they bang it way down track. That's yeah. when they're mad. Yeah. That's when, when the car bangs way down track. But you definitely, you pedaled it. and I and, did. Uh, and I, I regretted it instantly. You know, it felt so smooth. I felt tire spin before. Um, 
but I, and I've always let off the gas because it was in testing or qualifying, but this was the first time in eliminations it hits this hard. The car just started sliding sideways. And when it came back, I figured I see her and I'm, you know, if something happens to her, I want to be coming for her. So I let off the gas, got back on it. And I just heard bam, bam. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just broke the car. Are you sitting in the car going like this? (laughs) Yeah. No, but the uh, AB was sitting (laughs) And he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it was just, it was heartbreaking because my guys have been working so hard. We, you know, we broke the, the rear end broke in Charlotte and they, they literally stayed up all night long to fix it. And then this happened. And I'm just one that really appreciates everything that I have. And I have this great group of guys with Mahalik brothers, Corey and Kyle and, and all the crew guys. And to know that I just caused them you know, a a bunch more work. And I I didn't cause the tire spin, but I, you know, pedaling the car was, I had to learn that it probably was. And I understand now they explained it all to me, all the fuel that's being rushed in there and you let off the gas and you get back on it. And now that I know exactly what happened and when I feel that again, I'll know how to react. But like I said, it's unfortunate that you have to go through it to learn it because it's really hard to explain. Well, you, you, I will, I will tell you this. I've, I've been, around this sport, uh, for a long, long time. And, uh, the only person that I watched make a smoother transition than you is a guy that's here in the studio. Yeah. And, uh, it's always interesting watching somebody move from pro side bikes. No joke. I mean, it is no. no joke at all, but man, moving, you know, moving into alcohol, that's no joke. Moving into fuel, no joke. But I mean, it's it's just amazing. Uh, I'm happy for you. Thank you. I, I think what you got going on is a pretty cool deal. So I, I, di- I didn't want to do it at all. Um, my goal was to rent a pro stock motorcycle in three of the countdown races last year. I just I wanted to have three fun races, no pressure, just go out there whether I qualify or not, or just have fun. And and then save my goodbyes. And I told Antron that I, you know, that's what I was thinking about doing. I knew I had some money from Mission to play with. And he said, well, why don't you think about driving a dragster? And he's told me this many times before. I you know, do that. that instead of the bike. And I'm like, Antron, I've told you, I don't, I don't want to drive a dragster. I have no desire whatsoever. And then he just kept talking about it. And I finally said, all right, I, I'll try it. You know, I'm just going to, I'll give it a try. That way I can say, I try, yeah, I tried it. I don't like it. So we go out to Brainerd, Minnesota and um, I tried it. And the first day I did not like it. I did not think it was for me, but I had to realize that I hadn't been on the racetrack in a year. So no speed whatsoever for a whole year, no experience in a car whatsoever. I had no idea what I was doing or how to do it or what it was going to feel like. So that first day was very overwhelming. Um, the second day we traveled from Brainerd to Indy, the car did as well. And then we, we tested again on Wednesday. So I had that time to process everything that happened, think about what it felt like. And now I know what I'm doing. And so on Wednesday, it went from a hundred percent fear to, oh my God, this is fun. And now I have to admit to him that I like it. <laughs> so that's where it started. And, and here we are. And now we're we're even talking about moving into top fuel sometime. So we're off and running a great start here with Angel Sampe. So many questions. This is going to be a good one. Stick with us. My answer is the only thing that's, that's the same is the fact that I'm on a drag strip. Want to get the skinny on other guests in different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. The skinny is brought to you by. Fathead's Eyewear. Fathead's Eyewear. Hardcore since 04. And American Coach. Innovation is our life force. Welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana. We love it here, and this is the home of the skinny. Also on Mav TV, which is our home as well for the third year. Brand new studio here for 2024, and looking forward to more great shows. Of course, we have Angel Sampe, who has joined us here this week. We appreciate her time. Was here racing at uh, 
Lucas Oil Speedway, Lucas Oil Raceway Park, I should say. Lucas Oil Speedway's in Wheatland, Missouri, I believe. So uh, <laughs> I <believe> you're right. <laughs> uh, here, getting it done, of course, chasing that uh, that divisional win, and you guys run a little bit of both. Uh, we did have Julie on the show a couple of weeks ago, so a little some divisionals, some nationals that you guys mix in yeah. in that uh, sportsman category. But you were talking about Antron Brown talking you into getting into the car, so. Since we're going down this path here, and we'll talk about uh, some of your pro stock motorcycle success here a little bit later on the show, but um, I want to know what was the most difficult thing for you. And and I've got to think, too, that the crew that Antron has put together for you must have done a really nice job because that first outing inside of the car, like you said, you had been off for a year. If you got in that thing and it rattled the tires hard, you might have hung the helmet up right then and there. I said, yeah, I, I don't need any of that right there. <laughs> well, I d it did. The first car I was in, it wasn't the Mahalik Brothers car. We didn't join them until probably the third or fourth test session. And I'm so glad we did find them. Uh, but I, I've experienced a lot of tire shake in the beginning. Um, I had no idea what that was going to feel like. And the best description of that I can give you is if you put your head inside of a paint shaker at Walmart or Home Depot, it's literally, it rattles your brain so hard. And the entire spin is real. It, to me, it feels smooth and like almost like you're on oil. So I had to learn the difference between those two and, and how to handle it, like I talked about earlier. But um, the hardest thing I think for me is, I'm a very co coachable person, so everything I do, whether it's playing golf or, you know, hitting a baseball, if I have someone in my ear telling me everything to do and how to do it, I'm I'm pretty good at anything I've ever tried. Well, getting in the car, you can't really communicate with anybody. Even on the bike, you know, they can still stand right next to you and talk to you. If you forget to do something on the burnout, they can tell you, okay, you got to put it back in first gear. You know, when I was first learning how to do a pro stock bike, you can still have that communication. You can still see around you and move and turn and do, you know, get up and move the bike, you know, with your own two feet and hands. And I just felt more in control. And then when I got into the race car, it's now once it starts, I didn't. I don't have a radio, so there's no communication. I don't know what to do. I can't see anybody. I can't turn around. I can't get up. I'm like, I feel like I'm trying to wave. Yeah, out the way like, out. You know, what do I do if something's wrong? How do I how do I ask a question? I mean, it's it was really weird at first, and it's kind of almost like you're just you're you're completely on your own now, and um, that was the hard part at first. But it, it I got comfortable with it really quickly and started to learn, you know, if I do have to say something, how to communicate. Of course, Antron has a radio and eventually, you know, we would do that. But it's yeah, just Yeah, I would that almost think a radio in the beginning so you could communicate might, yeah. and then maybe on race day, take it out and let you exactly. just focus so yeah. nobody can interrupt you or a talk only button so you can talk to them. Maybe. Yeah. But uh, I think everybody pretty much forgot that I have never driven a car down the racetrack before yeah. i've been on a motorcycle and it's, it was a total different story for me yeah you're i mean your name's synonymous i mean the, you hear the name and you see the sport and it's like she's done this a million times you know <laughs> but it is so drastically different and it and it's all about a system right you had a system on a pro stock motorcycle you did the same thing over and over yes. and over again and like you said before now everything's completely yeah. different yeah it's i mean there's body mechanics involved and you know how you handle the motorcycle you drive with your body things you have to do when you launch when you release the clutch it's a it's a core thing that goes on to stay on the motorcycle you're not holding on with your hands or your arms and and this was so different because I'm just sitting back relaxed and, you know, you hit the gas and everything's strapped in, your chin strap and your uh, head and neck device. That there, there's so many things that's going on that you, you don't have to worry about in the car now, but then so many things that's going on that you don't have to worry about on a bike. So it was a difference. People ask me, what uh, what's the same or, or, or how different is it? And my answer is the only thing that's the same is the fact that I'm on a drag strip. And everything else is completely different. So really, really cool though, that you made that step. And we, we want to venture a little bit more, find out some more of the intricacies that uh, that you are developing here inside of this alcohol car. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Did you go to uh, a Frank Holly school at all? No, I, just... went to, I went to AB Motorsports. <laughs> Motorsports. <laughs> 
You're looking at Angel Sampe, who's on the set with us here, along with Rico Elmore, myself, Ken Stout. Great to have you with us here on the skinny once again. And we've been talking about this big change that Angel made from 2022 in Pro Stock Motorcycle to an alcohol, or well, actually a top fuel. That's not top fuel or fuel. It's so difficult. You want to say top alcohol dragster yeah. every time, but it's not what you're driving. So that's what throws me off. But the fuel injected car, and it, and it is different. Like in a in a top alcohol dragster, there's a one two shift, isn't there? I, you know, I'm still trying to learn. There is, yeah, head. there's a one two yeah. shift, but you don't have a one two shift, no, right? No, yeah. No. I, I Antron wanted me in the A fuel car for the specific reason that it is exactly what he does in the top fuel car. So he wanted me to learn the procedure exactly the same, not have to, you know, build these habits and then break them and do something differently. So from the burnout to the turnout, I it's everything I do is the same. So that's that's a great point. And you led us right to the water because that's in plans to drive a fuel car. It's it's what we would like to happen. We are definitely headed in that direction. And of course, everything depends on funding. So we're working in that direction. We literally just poured the seat from my top fuel car to be able to start testing this year. Um, I don't know how far that's going to go or what's going to happen, but we will definitely get a couple of test runs in within the next couple of months. So. Did you put the telephone books in the in the back so you could? <laughs> yeah, reach so the they pedals? they put me. He's got a he's got a car being built right now in the shop, and we got in that one, and it just has the the carbon fiber seat in there that has nothing lifting you up and they told me to get in that one so we could see about how much we're going to need to build the seat up and i got in it fully suited with fire suit and they all started laughing it's like they're, they're well, looking they at me see in the you car anymore, is yeah it? they're laughing just, at me. Go? <laughs> i'm like what's so funny and they're like just look how little she is so they start measuring he said it's going to take like six inches of padding to lift me up to be able to see and so you know we he does a great job at, at pouring these seats and so they it got me up and tightened in and all comfortable and so tomorrow we'll finish up on that seat and it look when he said we're going to pour your seat for the top fuel car oh my gosh the butterflies in my stomach started floating around and I felt just like the day I got in the a fuel car so it's it's another I don't know what to expect so I'm, I'm a little afraid right now but we'll see how it goes so did you go to uh, a Frank Holly school at all no, you I just... went to I went to A B Motorsports. <laughs> like that. A B accelerate program. I was like, hey, accelerated okay, service. Yep. Right. Hey, he's pretty sharp, too. Yeah. That guy's pretty sharp. Yeah. So <laughs> no. I figured if he if anyone can teach me how to do it, it's him. So that's all I've had. That's been my instruction is is Antron and then of course Cub. Oh, one on one private coaching from a three time champ snap. Yeah. Bad. It felt smooth. But I'm, I can't, I all see a sky and I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> this is way better than I ever thought it was going to be. <laughs> We've got a great show working here. Angel Sampe in the studio with us, and great to hear the transition from Pro Stock Motorcycle to, of course, the nitro injected car, the fuel injected car. And we were just talking while we were commercial break here about you being making that first run. And actually, what she really said to him at the end of the end of the track, you'll have to talk to her personally to get that. But um, what was it like? I mean, that, we're talking about you got off of a motorcycle that goes 200 miles an hour. But I mean, you're on a bike. It feels faster. It's kind of like being in a boat. It feels yeah. fast. But then you get into a car that's going 270 miles an hour. Do you remember the first run? It, it was the scariest thing in the world, which is why I had the words with him at the end of the track. But I don't even know how I, I don't know how I did it. Like, I don't know what happened. I'll, I hit the throttle. The car took off. I couldn't see where I was going. I, I, I did not get myself to the finish line the good lord did i, I don't know i i could sounds like a typical I, it race. was it was insane it was so fast and i know a lot of it was because like i said i hadn't been on the track in a while but it the vibrations and the speed and i couldn't see and i, I just it was oh my gosh i cannot believe i'm doing this and that's how it was most of that day <laughs> it took me quite a while for my brain to catch up to the car when i was did behind it, when did it go away uh, the, so the second day in the car, I started to be able to at least see where I was on the racetrack. Now, had anything gone wrong, I don't know what was going to happen. Because, I mean, I, I could see that I was going straight. I could see where I was on the racetrack. But I just couldn't think. All I could, it's like, if this car turns, 
I'm done because I, I, I don't know what to do. And but fortunately, the cars do go straight. They, they are easy to drive. And now I'm definitely processing it fast enough that I can I know what's happening. I, I can look up and think things, you know, you know, it's all at, on the bike. I could have 45 minutes of information go through my head in six seconds because I was so used to it. And I'm getting that way in the car now. So, so I'm feeling more comfortable. Did you make some progressive runs? Did you make a 330 pass and then an eighth mile pass? I did. Yeah. yeah. So the first one they told me, you know, just it, they figured we would do a half track pass. I think I stabbed the accelerator and I got right off of it. it, it but it went into tire shake pretty quickly and I couldn't see. I went completely blind. And when I got back, they said, why'd you let off the gas? And I said, well, I couldn't see. I went blind. And they said, welcome to tire shake. So I didn't know <laughs> what that was. And that's why I said I wanted to hit him and that this is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Because um, I thought to myself, how do you do this? I can't see anything. I thought that was normal. <laughs> and I thought maybe I just don't have the ability to see well because it was like that as, you know, as soon as I took off. And I'm like, you can't, you can't, this is stupid. So, but then when they said it's tire shake, I'm like, oh, thank God. So we don't do that every yeah. time, right? <laughs> <laughs> but even on a, on a straight pass that the tires are hooked and you're going, I literally feel the muscles around my eyes straining to focus on my point at the end of the track that I want to get to. Like, I have never tried so hard to focus on anything before in my life. On the bike, you know, I could see it and, you know, I could look down there and see it, but I saw everything in my peripheral. I was thinking about stuff. And People eating cotton candy. Just all relax. The yeah, you know, and you're moving your body to drive. And this, I'm like, the whole way down the track. You, uh, AB, do you remember Jimmy Harrington? The shoe, Jimmy the shoe? Yes, yeah. Jimmy, yeah, unfortunately passed away. He was a great instructor and he was, he was like a super comp guy. He was a, he was a bracket racer. Um, but he would teach me, he put me in one of his cars one time. It was pretty cool. But he said a lot of people, when they first hit the throttle on one of those cars, it'll yank their foot off of the car. So they almost, mm -hmm. you know, double clutch it. Did that happen to you at all? No, nope, no, nope, I actually was pretty good. You I smashed that I, thing I down. I smashed and... <laughs> it and then I went blind. And I, so I let off the gas. And then the second round, we went a little bit further and it did the same thing again. So I let off the gas. They did tell me that. They were pretty proud of how fast, you know, I felt it. And I was like, well, it's more than feel you can't see. And I'm not, I'm not staying on the accelerator when I can't see where I'm going. And I've been, since then, I've had some pretty crazy things happen to me. So one run, I forgot to tighten up my chin strap. That was fun. Let me tell you how you hit the, feel the gas on that and your head flies up like this. And I, all I see is the and sky. And once again, you couldn't see. And so, and I'm like, <laughs> I thought I was popping a wheelie. I thought the car was in the air. Because I didn't know what was going on. It felt smooth, but I'm, I can't, all I see is sky. And I'm like, what's happening? This so, is way better than I ever thought it was going to be. So, so, I, let, so I, let off the, I let off the throttle and then I could see again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I bet the car was in the air like that. <laughs> and then, so I started moving around. Like, oh, oh gosh, I forgot to tighten it my chin strap. So that was the whole thing. So that has never happened again. I hope it never does. And then there was another time where it was starting to get cool outside and my, you know, nervous breath happened and I hit the throttle and I'm going down the track and I'm feeling so confident and all of a sudden, whoo, I can't see. Fog. My vibes are fogged up oh. and I went completely blind at 230 miles per hour and there is nothing you can do about it. This is a great time for a plug. We make anti-fog. Yeah, well, we I use it see. now. I definitely do. I never go up to the starting line without my visor with yeah. anti-fog on. I never thought about that. So so there's no pumper system. You guys don't use a fresh air. Antron has a fresh air system in his. I do not. Uh, it went completely fogged up. I couldn't see. So I literally drove. I'm sure I probably could have lifted up my visor, but I didn't think at the time. All I thought was, holy crap. So I started paying attention to the blobs of color around me. And I could see the signs on the wall. And I could see the cones. I could see blobs of color. And I said, I'm just going to try to keep it straight until I knew I was slowing down enough that I reached up and, and put my visor up. Now I'm thinking I should have just did that in the first place, but I was you You've know, only been in the car at eight events. So you spent half that the time happened not probably seeing where you're going. That probably happened about the eighth run down the track ever. <laughs> so then I'm thinking, this you're is you're learning a lot. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's look. Let me tell you, I can't believe I'm still doing it, but I really enjoy it now. I'm to the point where I'm I'm ready to just go faster, do it again. I can't wait to get in the car. 
So we'll see what's going to happen in the future with, you know, going even faster. But right now I'm having a really good time. Spoken like a true drag racer. We'll have more in just a moment. Watch you on Moto Igor? Well, I was told not to touch any after that. <laughs> the Skinny is brought to you by American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. And Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. Welcome back to the Skinny. We have a full house here today. Michael Young running the controls back there. Always good to have him. AB is in the house and has chimed in a couple of times. A pleasant surprise. Was not expecting him to walk through the door today, but uh, he is always welcome. A friend of the show and great when he's around as well. And of course, our subject here this week is Angel Sampe. I'm here too. Yeah, <laughs> Rico's here. Hard to miss you, pal. I didn't want you to forget about me. 45 number one qualifiers. Help me out here because I could Is be it, off. I think it's more than that. One or two here. Yeah, I could. I, I might be off a little I bit. I think it's over 50 now. Is it really? Yeah. 46 wins. Yeah, 46. Pretty impressive to, to say the least. It should be like 75. I blew, <laughs> I blew a lot of those wins. Second most wins for any female to Erica Enders, who's still crushing it, of course. Um, debuted in 1996. I have here held an active record of 108, <laughs> uh, held an active record of 182 consecutive races. Oh, gosh. I'm going to tell you why. Why DNQ. I got my first DNQ. I'm so mad at myself for that. So, yes, I, I would have hoped to go on many more races without a DNQ. But so it was a Friday in Las Vegas. I decided to help the guys unload the race trailer. And have you seen the starter carts, the bikes they start the bikes with, those big heavy boxes? Mm -hmm. Well, I grabbed the handle of the starter cart, pulled it behind me down the ramp of the rig, and it it's loaded down with car batteries. It's very heavy. It picked up speed on the ramp and ran over the back of my ankle and lacerated my Achilles and the two tendons on the outside of my ankle, Ooh. all three of them. Oh. Um, I was bleeding all over the place. Fortunately, there was an NHRA tech guy there. They called the medics. They came and got me. I had the doctor stitch me up on site, inject lidocaine into my ankle, and I tried to ride the bike that day. So I made two passes down the track with a, well, three lacerated tendons, Awful. and um, I couldn't control the bike because, like we said earlier, you have to drive the bike with your body. It was going to the center line. I was trying to stand on the left foot. I couldn't do it did not qualify because I couldn't make it down the track. They've sent me to the trauma center that night. I begged them to let me ride the bike the next day just to get qualified. And they've, so the doctor, the NHRA doctor wouldn't allow me to get back on the bike. So I was, I had my first DNQ. So it really had nothing to do yeah. with performance. It nothing was... to do with performance. If I was, had, had not been so stubborn and hard headed and just withdrew from the race, I wouldn't have had the DNQ. <laughs> Still an incredible number. Yeah, I it mean, was. Did they ever let you unload anymore? Well, I was told not to touch any after that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <a> smart move. <laughs> like whoever thought that yeah. was really good. We've been talking about the transition, obviously, to the dragster, but uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't at least touch on on your pro stock motorcycle career. And and I want to know how it really got going. When how did you get the attention of a George Bryce at star racing? So have you ever seen the movie Rudy? Oh yeah. So that is 100% of the reason why I race pro stock motorcycles. I watched that movie and I wanted to race a pro stock bike. I had seen it at state capital dragway. That's what I wanted to do. So I started writing letters to George and Frank Holly's drag racing school. And I said, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I want to be. And at the time, I was just racing a little supercar bike at State Capitol. And I said, I, you know, I want to race pro stock bikes. And I even signed the letter, future pro stock motorcycle champion. And no one knew who I was. I had never ridden on a big tire bike. I had this little small tire supercar bike. And George said the fact that I signed it, future pro stock motorcycle champion, he's like, who is this? Like, what, who does she think she is? And so... I ended up going to the school, the Frank Hollis Drag Racing School, met George there, drove the bike. Um, I set a school elapsed time record, speed record. It was because I was so little and, you know, that we were all the same. You don't have to throw that stuff Well, out. I was little. You just set a record. I was like 95 pounds. So, of course, the bike's going to go fast <laughs> with me on it. And George said, 
you know, he's, he thought there was some things I was doing very wrong, but there was a lot of stuff I was doing right that you can't even teach people how to do. The things I was doing wrong was teachable, the right things, the mental part of it, I, I had it. So he wanted me to come back to the school. Well, I couldn't afford a second entry into the school. So I sold my super comp bike to pay for my way back into the school. And um, I knew it was all or nothing. You know, like if I don't make it happen, I, now I have no bike to race. So I uh, did that. Then he wanted me to come back again. I was like, well, I don't have any more money. I don't have anything else to sell. And he says, well, if you can recruit five students into the school, we'll let you come back. Well, within three hours, I had five students recruited to the school. So I was just so motivated and determined. I was not going to take no for an answer. I had people tell me you're too little. You know, there weren't girls out there doing this, but um, I was just determined. And George Bryce and Star Race and Ken Johnson, all the guys on that team were the same way. And we it was just a good combination. Was so, Myers on the team at the time? John was. Yep. John was one of my coaches. I, I, I spent the whole first year following him around at the track, learning from him while we were testing on the side. It, it was an it was an amazing start. And I was very lucky to have the people I had because I didn't jump into it with not knowing what I'm doing and not good equipment and, you know, having a rough start, I was very lucky to be accepted. And I tried talking to other people. Dave Schultz was one of them. Terry Vance was another. And I pretty much got laughed at by everybody else, you know, but George didn't, he gave me the shot. So. A big start with some of the biggest names of all time at pro stock motorcycle. We'll touch more on that when we come back. I'm in the new car that's being built. He gets in his current car and he looks over at me. He goes, I can't really wait to whip that ass. Want to get the skinny on other guests in different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. Once again, welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana. You're watching The Skinny Way of Angel Sampe in the studio with us, and we've shifted gears talking about a pro stock motorcycle career, uh, obviously a stellar career, winning the championships that she won and talking about how she got going with George Bryce and kind of bulldogged her way into that category, obviously earning her way along the way. And while we're, once again, while we're at commercial break, we always have the best stories on commercial break. It's just the way it goes. But um, listening to you guys talk, because I asked An Antron, what was his last year? He said 2007. But you uh, you were losing the ride at Star because Winston was going away. What a fabulous uh, story that is as well. Uh, but that ride going away, and unbeknownst to us, George thought you should retire at that point? Yeah, so he said he thought, you know, now would be a good time to retire going out on top. You know, we didn't foresee any other way of me continuing to race. There was no funding, and I think they were going to sit on the side for a while and figure out what they were going to do. So I called Antron, and I said, you know, I, th I think I'm going to go ahead and announce my retirement. He's like, are you crazy? You can't leave the sport. We need you here. And then I was like, well, I don't have a ride. I don't have any money. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm done. And he said, well, he had just purchased Dave Schultz's motorcycle and that was the one he was going to ride. And he had a sponsorship that would cover him for the year. So he told me, I'll let you ride the new bike. I'll stay on mine. We'll set that one up for you. And I have enough money to get us at least halfway through the season. And maybe the two of us together would be marketable, wow. more marketable than us separated. And uh, so we joined Team 23 together. And it worked. Within a couple of months, we landed the Army sponsorship. And and Antron and I had a huge deal with that team for five years, I think. Yeah. We, we got to race yeah. with them. And um, it was amazing. So that was the first time. And he he doesn't like when I say this, but that's the first time he saved my career in racing. You know, So we continued on with um, the Army for five years, and we raced together and then he and you guys, up, he said you guys won the first two races? Out. Yeah, so so when I left, there was a lot of question of, okay, is she going to be able to win not with Star Racing? You know, now she's with Antron and Team 23, and we didn't have the big corporate sponsor. Is she going to be able to win? Well, we went out to the Gator Nationals first race of the year, and I won that race. We went to the second race of the year, and he won the race. So we started off the season I mean, on fire. You know, you've mentioned the name here a couple of times. I've got to ask you, what was it like the first time you lined up next to a Dave Schultz, a John Myers? So Dave, I could beat. He was very intimidating. I actually beat him at the fourth race I went to. My fourth race 
into my career, um, I was in the final round against Dave. I was number one qualifier, set the national ET record, and had Dave in the final, and he red lit, and I won the race. John Myers couldn't beat him, and it was all a mental thing. He was just, and it wasn't like I was scared of him, or I was, I just looked up to him so much. I loved him. He was an amazing human being. And I, I just thought he's just the greatest thing that's ever walked the face of the earth when it comes to pro side motorcycles. And I will never be able to beat him. And I really had a hard time doing it. I can't even remember if I ever did. And then, of course, there was Antron, who I think is also an amazing human being, but I could whip his ass with no problem. <laughs> so, and I did All a lot. Boring. Yeah, so every time I get on the start line against Ant Only the final round. You mean the money <laughs> round? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, the money <laughs> round. So for some reason, I am the best racer I can be when Antron's on the other lane. So today, <laughs> when we're pouring the seat, I'm in the new car that's being built. He gets in his current car, and he looks over at me. He goes, I can't wait to whip that ass. So he, he's already playing. Like when we line up against each other, he can't wait to beat me. Um, it's uh, it's exciting. It's it's cool to hear the stories. I, you know, uh, Dave was the man. He was in Very that time, and, and John, versus. and John. I mean, whew, goosebumps thinking of, thinking about those cats. You know, and you were right in the thick of it, and winning championships with it, and and making your way in this sport eventually onto the bike with Vance and Hines, your arch rivals for so many years, crazy. which <laughs> uh, another crazy story all on its own. And then, uh, and then into, into, uh, well, hopefully a fuel car here in, in the near future, but into the dragster, it's, it's been quite a career. I mean, you're so working George on George asked me when I first started racing pro stock bikes, he says, how long do you want to do this? How long do you think you're going to do this? I said, if I could get five years, uh, you know, five years of professional racing, I'd be happy. That was a long That's why he looked at you and ago. said you could retire now. You wanted five, you know, you won yeah. three championships. You, you yeah. did it. Go five years conflict. went by in about five months, and then five more years went by, and then five more years, and here we are, like 27 So, boom, years then you're now. up to like 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she said, you need to get to work. There's a box here, and it's something in it, and it's moving. The Skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear. Hardcore since 04. And American Coach. Innovation is our life force. Welcome back to The Skinny. Hey, we've got some news coming your way as well. Obviously, you can watch a show here every Sunday night at 7 o'clock on MAV TV. Our favorite partners, of course, in this crime. But, uh, Rico, you've also been working on the, working on a podcast, on the podcast side of it. We've had a number of people say, how can we listen to this? So once shows are reviewed, they obviously premiere here on MAV TV. But uh, give, them, give them a couple of weeks and they'll be able to listen to it in a podcast format. Yeah, so... Uh... You know, they go onto YouTube right now. So go on to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, has a lot of old stuff, has some stuff that, uh, that we're clearly, uh, uh, that may not be able to make it on the TV, <clears throat> excuse me, make it on TV. And so, you know, that's, that's one cool part about it. But now we have, uh, signed a deal here where. We'll be on all the major podcast networks where you can download it, listen to it in the car, uh, Spotify, uh, on uh, iTunes, and all the rest of them. So hopefully here within the next week or so, we'll have them all up on there. And, uh, yeah, give it a subscribe and listen. I, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we did way before we had uh, cool digs like this. We were operating out of a... Uh, out of a uh, conference room with a backdrop, so <laughs> we, we, we came a little ways. Plenty of room for branding as well, if uh, if your company can take advantage of that. So keep that in mind as well. Angel Sampea has joined us here in the studio. His show has sailed by. It always does when you're having a good time. Uh, incredible career in, in pro stock motorcycle that has parlayed itself uh, to creating some great relationships along the way. Obviously, you and, and Antron Brown have one of those relationships, and I didn't uh, I didn't realize you were so close when you were racing back on the bikes. Something learned here today for sure. And uh, and then, obviously, um, 
the second generation, if you will, into a dragster to see where this thing goes. We appreciate you taking the time to uh, to spend with us in the studio and and telling the stories. You're a great storyteller, and <laughs> and we we like what AB said. He said he said there's things that I just wish she wouldn't say. But she she just says them anyway. Yeah, so. I don't I don't have a filter. I was born and raised on the bayou, and down there you're not better than anybody, and no better body's better than you. We're all the same. So I wear my emotions on my sleeve, and that's gotten me some haters along the way you know people don't like to see me get emotional I cry when I win I cry when I lose it's just who I am but it's the passion that they don't understand and the the people that do understand it appreciate it I don't like when somebody wins a race and they're just like oh you know I want to thank my crew and we did a good job and there's you know I you know my wins every one of them feels like the first one and so that first top alcohol or a field drags or win that's coming i know it's coming you'll probably see some tears you went so, to the, did you go to the final in your first one this year yeah the, the I, had a, I had a final in vegas i think it was yeah vegas mm-hmm. divisional so we got close um but i have been really good with my emotions and the dragster so far just i'm just having so much fun but in gainesville i finally felt it for the first time i lost second round and i was really thinking it was going to be our day so it hurt and then, of course, the other day when I pedaled the car and caused it to blow up, I had some emotions there. And that that was all just, you know, feeling sorry for what I did. Tell us who's your, who all your sponsors are. What have you got going on? Yeah, so we, we have some great backing this year. Hank Stipper has stepped up on our program and is now our major sponsor for the rest of the year. And what do they do? Uh, metalworking lubricants. So they And I just learned that they make a lubricant for guns, too. I'm a big, a big gun fan, gun owner. Um, so then we have uh, Mission, of course, is still on board with me. I still work for Mission as a spokesperson um, doing the Mission Challenges. I'm very busy at the racetrack these days. Uh, we have FVP. I loved it. I wasn't sure who won. You had a half a suit on, <laughs> yeah. handing out a trophy, and they had. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really want to have to do that, but I, I was working the mission challenge, oh, giving yeah. the you know the the medal to the winner. But my car was in the staging lanes, so I had to get down there immediately and jump in the car and, and run. So we also have uh, FVP with us this year. We have IGTG, which is a, a internet consulting. Um, am I, who am I missing? We have uh, Lucas. Lucas Oil, of course, the Lucas Oil Series, AB Motorsports. I'm on the AB Accelerate program, which is a, a really cool program. You can get in with that with Antron and all his team to learn anything there is about drag racing. It doesn't have to be a driver. It could be the social media side of it. So I'm excited to be doing that. I feel like I'm missing someone, though. So FVP, Mission, um, Hank Safers. We've had some really cool people help us get started. Range was a uh, Case and Kubota dealership, happens to be my neighbor who owns the dealership. He helped us get the first race done at um, No Problem Raceway, which was a huge race for me because my dad is battling cancer right now. Uh, There goes the emotions. And we don't know if he's going to make another race this year. So that hometown race was real important. And thanks to Range, we got to do that. And then um, so but we have we have the financing and and the backing that we need to get through this year. Uh, we were always looking for more, of course, you know, there's more stuff we could do, more testing. So anybody that wants to come on board is more than welcome. I'm going to ask you one last curveball question, completely off topic. You said you're a Bayou girl. What's your favorite meal? Seafood boil? So it's actually not, it's, I love lobster. Um, and we, and this is another cool story. Hope we have time real quick. But so when Antron and I raced our first race together at Team 23, he, he was with another tool company at the time. And one of the guys that was on, he was a tool distributor. He said, if you win this race, I'm going to send you a case of lobster. Well, I never thought I was going to win the race. So, but we did. And I get a call from the girl who was running my office at the time. I had a Suzuki dealership. She said, you need to get to work. There's a box here and it's something in it and it's moving. And so I get to the shop and I open it up and there's a case of live lobster. And so I didn't know what to do. I called the company. I said, I don't know. What do I do with this stuff? So she starts telling me how to steam it. I said, that's not going to work. So I called my uncle Wayne. I said, you want to boil some lobster with me? So we got out the crawfish pot and we threw those suckers in there and we did it. We did a crawfish boil with lobster. We sat around a folding table with paper bowls with our melted butter in it. We looked like the you know, with Paige, it, we, it was nothing fancy. It was lobster, but we were eating and it was the best lobster I ever had. So I, I love, lo- I love crawfish, but lobster has got to be it for me. It, what's the, the, is there a big difference in the taste? Oh my gosh. When you boil it like a, like a 
crawfish hell yeah it was so much better than steam steam lobster has no taste to it right it's when you dip it in the butter okay. you don't even need the butter when you boil it like crawfish it was amazing wow so yeah if i, I go out, a good story i go out and i get one food. last meal it's crawfish boiled lobster crawfish boiled lobster, lobster. Yep. there you go Try that one out at home, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a great time. Thank you very much for taking the time to come over here. I know your schedule's packed, and uh, you were just racing here this weekend. but we No, I enjoy it. it. I was in town for a couple of days, and it worked out perfectly. I really appreciate you guys having me, and the studio is amazing. Best Thank of luck. You. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very yeah, much. And Chad did all the work. So Yeah, yeah. I, I at least told him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen to me. <laughs> hope you grab that win here this year. Best of luck the rest of the season as you chase it, and uh, hopefully we see you in a fuel car real soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Skinny on Angel Sampe.